Hey guys, what's up? Man, what do you guys think she carries in that bottle? I think she got that from Drang. I love Drang. Why don't they add Drang to this freaking game, man? Anyway, today we're going to be doing a fairy guide. People ask me for fairy. Fairy is like my main. And uh, I play support fairy though. So it's gonna be a little bit different because I like support builds. So I'm gonna show you guys a support fairy setup. But you can easily translate this into a DPS setup if you need to know what to get for that. Uh, check out the video that we posted uh, the other day. That has all you need to start off uh, building your sigil grids in Grand Blue Fantasy feeling. Okay, so first off, we'll talk about gear. I'm using Ethereal Lasher right now. If you're just starting off, this is one case where I recommend you get the leather belt instead of the critical uh, critical damage one. And that's if you're going support. If you're going damage, go ahead and get the critical. Go ahead and get the critical weapon, which is going to be the flamelit curl. And this has 25 level 25 critical hit rate and 15 critical hit, hit damage. This is really good for DPS. Support wise, we're going with the leather belt, which is 25 stun power and 15 linked together. And linked together is really great for uh, support. Or no, I'll go into that later. However, I am using the Bahamut weapon, the uh, Ethereal Lasher Terminus weapon. It's just kind of too good. So let's go into some of the skills that you're going to want to pick up on Fairy. Uh, Phantasm's Concord, I feel like is a must. It has a chance to just debuff the enemy, both attack and defense. So the defense down is going to help any of your teammates that aren't capped. Again, the power of that is going to wane the higher the higher you are in the game. Like the more the more powerful you are in the game, the more powerful your teammates are the less useful Phant uh, the Phantasm of Concord um, defense down is going to be. But the attack down is almost always good because it could be the difference between getting one-shotted and then getting hurt and being able to pot back up and keep the DPS going. So one thing that you really want on Fairy is Phantasm's Awakening, which is her Awakening Sigil, which is unfortunately, you just have to get lucky. <laughs> but it gives you both traits and uh, it gives you damage, damage cap per active pet on her onslaught, which can be pretty good. Stun power. You want to have as much stun power as possible, at least over 200, and that's going to get you a pretty good stun with your with your purge spirits pretty easily. So the goal here is to be able to stun your enemy instantly on demand as fairy. You don't want this like slow build up to the link gate to the link chance. You want it like always hitting link chance at every opportunity and that's why we're running stun power alongside with link together because link together is going to give you that link level gain 27 percent, so you can get up to your uh your bullet time uh it's going to give you uh chain burst damage which is it's just a little nice thing on the side the sba damage and then it's going to give you link attack damage as well so it's just really all around really good support it's going to get you Again, those links, and it's going to get you big damage on this chain burst. You know, we're running the usual. I'm not going to go into, like, all of this other stuff um, because this is in the other video. So check out the other video if you want to know how to build your own preliminary builds and, like, how to build, like, DPS. Um, so, again, stun. Um, we're going to want as high as possible. Uh, I'm kind of at 42 right now. Didn't really get good rolls on all of my stuff. So I don't really have leveled sigils. So other good things are uh, quick cooldown is going to be great. It's going to just lower your cooldowns. Fairy is very cooldown dependent. And then we're going to go Cascade just for more cooldowns. You can also run uh, Stout Heart, which is you can run the you can run the sigil that makes it so you don't get hit out of your um, you don't get hit out of your channels. But I don't think it's that good. Personally, I, I wouldn't go. Ahead. We're going to go ahead and talk about skills. So Fairy, unlike a lot of other characters, has a lot of contested skill slots. She's got a lot of really good stuff. And we're going to go talk about it. So your bread and butter here is Purge Spirits. For the support build you absolutely need this and honestly this is just good in general even on on your attack build so purge spirits has a high amount of stun which is going to work with your high amount of stun to instantly stun the boss and that's also going to summon all four of your pets huji nicola gigi and beppo so one weird thing about about fairy and this isn't something a lot of people know she actually has four pets not three i know the graphic shows three pets but the first graphic is actually two pets and that's going to come in later it's 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 weird i don't know why they did it like that it, they should have just done four this is her other ability so if you're gonna run any sort of damage this is absolutely necessary and this is hinrichton this is your big damage ability as fairy it sets you up for really dealing a ton of damage especially during you know your link times that you're going to be getting your sbas that you're going to be able to to hit during chain chance so pretty much mandatory the attack boost is kind of not really that good it's really good early game kind of as you're building your grid but as you get to late game the attack boost is going to be overshadowed by like 
you're gonna get hit the cap so it's not really gonna help you that much later but again really early really early it's really good critical hit rate really great for like kind of getting you over the top uh it's pretty often that you don't actually hit crit cap which is 100 crit you usually are running like 90 80 so like this critical hit is really gonna secure those big hits and then you have supplementary damage which is the biggest, the big stat that you really want. And that does an echo damage. So think of it as a double strike. Every time you hit, there's an additional hit of damage. And that does not get capped by damage cap. However, like the actual value does get capped by damage cap. It's own damage cap. But it, it's an additional damage that you wouldn't have had before, basically, is what I'm saying. And invincibility is always good. I mean... Full DPS window, invincibility, you know, protect yourself from anything. Really great. There's one catch this ability is you have to have four pets in order to use it. At least three and then four for the invincibility. So, I, I mean, I would just only use this with all four pets out. All right. So next we have um, Umlof. And Umlof is kind of, it's kind of weird. It does about double the damage that your strafe is going to do, but it doesn't summon a pet. So I'm not really a huge fan of it. It's also like the damage is highly reliant on the boss actually staying next to you for a very long time. So I actually don't like that. I know a lot of people do like it. You can also run Sikkim GG. So support wise, we'll talk over some, some of the support options. So Sikkim GG is a slow. And it's really, really good for helping your, your DPS to get additional DPS in. You, your your Naru is going to be able to get like the entire combo off if you use this slow. So I wouldn't use it against Proto Bahamut because it, it's going to depend on the boss. So you're just going to have to feel out the boss, land your slow on the boss, and kind of see like how does the boss behave under the slow. Most of the bosses actually get slowed for a pretty long time. Bahamut does not. Don't bring this to Proto Bahamut, but you can try to bring it to other enemies like the dragons. Benediction is another weird one because it's very very good early game and it really falls off hard late game so again you've got the attack boost we've already talked about this how the attack boost is really really good early game but once you're damage capped it doesn't really give you anything it can help out your teammates that aren't damage capped though so if like you know you have teammates that are weaker than you it could help boost their damage which gives you honors and um and then you have defense which is uh, going to keep your allies alive. A lot of ground blue is about do you survive the next hit or not? There's not really a lot of like small dinky damage. There's a lot of really huge hits. And if defense, if the extra defense is what leads to you not dying, that's a difference between a pot and like having to pick someone up or having them auto revive, which takes a long time or use one of their revival pots. So defense can be really good. You could just pop a max potion and you're, you're back you're back to fighting. Regen is very situational. It's really good for chopping off when there is dinky damage. Like say your teammate hit like, you know, a fire puddle or something like that. And they take a little bit of damage. The regen will keep them up, top them off, keep their stamina up. Um, And it also has a immediate heal, just a burst heal at the beginning. One major issue with Benediction is again, how annoying it is to use. You have to have at least three pets up in order to use it to get all of the benefits. Again, like, you know, having two pets up, which is just, uh, we'll talk about that later, but having just your two pets up can help with just regen and defense, if that's what you're interested in. The other problem is it's PB AoE. It's a, it spreads around her rather than hitting the whole map. So you have like Cagliostro players that are just like mashing Phantasmagoria on cooldown. You can't do that. You have to actually like jump into the middle of your team and cast it. And if you're running with like Rackham, EO, and then you have like a bunch of melees, you're not gonna hit them all so you're getting a lot less value so benediction again use it early and it's gonna be you're gonna have to make that calculation of if it's worth having at the end so that leaves a couple more options you've got blas Gepmenst, which summons hoogie and nicola onto the battlefield so again this is your first pet but it's two pets so it actually gives you the benefit of two pets uh if you Fugi and Nicola also it's like defense down. Um, so and it does a little bit of damage. So it's 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 pretty good, actually. And Pendle, uh, I don't really recommend Pendle too much. It's it's to like reposition. It's uh, you know, you're in the middle of a boss's attack and you need to like get out, but you have better options. You have uh, perfect dodge, perfect guard, um, much better options. You also pop Hinrichten to give yourself invincibility. So it's kind of like I don't really like it personally. Okay, so we're gonna go. Probably Blouse. Again, 
You can run slow, depends on your what you're up against, but slow is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna pick a uh, blouse the guest fence just to um show you guys how to use it. What? What did you say? Don't you naughty me? Don't talk to me like that, kid. All right, fairy. Fairy is a very complicated character. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. She's pretty complicated. Execution wise, not too bad, but you're gonna have to think a lot. You're gonna have to think on the fly and be able to pick what's best for each situation. So purge spirits hits an immediate stun. So you really wanna use purge spirits, boom. Instantly stuns. Your bread and butter with fairy is to immediately pop the stun once you're able to. Because she has such high stun, you can stun, for example, Perlo Bahamut during phases that normally you couldn't even get any damage in. Like normally you get a little bit of dinky damage in, but Fairy comes in, drops the fat link, and the boss comes crashing down, which gives your your team um, a little window to do like a little combo, which is great. So she's got a couple attacks. Um, she's got like a regular whip attack. That's it, and that's cancelable. So saves a little bit of time. Other thing that she has is her charge. And that summons two pets. All right, again, two pets, which is why you don't really want to do this. It's not worth it. And I'll explain why later. One thing that you do need to know on Fairy, though, is uh, you need to learn how to do the link cancel. So you hit, oops, wait for this guy to calm down. You're going to hit that, boom. And then you're going to hit this and then last your link attack, okay? One thing to note is that her ghost, this is a very important thing with Fairy. Her ghosts can only be at one place at one time. And that sounds like, why would that matter? But it matters a lot. When I use the ability, there they go. They're fighting, they're doing DPS, they're applying debuff. And when I pop this, they instantly jump back to me. So your, your pets always have to come out from where you are. And they have to run over and you're losing dps so you want to summon your pets as close as you can to the boss when you land purge you're gonna want to hit that and then link attack and then you, re you retain your three pets because link attack gives you your pets back so your basic thing with fairy is you want to use onslaught so on this is the most damage but you want to have at least your first two pets out which are summoned from your first combo. You want to have those out. And you just basically, if you have pets, if you have a skill that summons pets, use it. Summon your pets. When it runs out, summon the next pets. Oh, I'll talk about this later. But summon your next pets. That's out. Summon your next pet. And you basically do this over and over again. If you get Link, of course you hit it. Uh, anytime you hit Link, you want to onslaught your pets out and then hit the Link to refresh. So again, boom, purge this out, Link. You have your pets back. SBA also gives you your pets back. So your Ogi will give you three pets. Four pets, sorry, four. Requiesce cat. So your general thing is, if you have Hinrichten up, uh, you want to save Hinrichten for like big da DPS windows. That's going to be your link time and uh, SBA chains. You want to keep Hinrichten for that because you want to get as much Hinrichten damage as you can. And you can kind of use it too if like you're you need like the invincibility from it. You can use it for that as well. Um, yeah. And again, you need to have four pets to use Hinrichten. Otherwise, it won't work. It, it, it won't give you the supplemental damage that you need, so... Whoa, I got a follow while I was offline. That's cool. Thank you, Woke Tomato, on Twitch. By the way, I stream... That's a good segue. I stream on uh, Twitch.tv. I stream... I'm um, streaming every day for the next couple weeks. Playing Grand Blue Fantasy. Otherwise, I usually stream four to five days a week. And I play a lot of games like this. Now that you know the general flow of how to play Fairy, I'm going to show you a bunch of optimizations. So just to recap, use your spells. Always purge before you, uh, always onslaught before you, before you link. So you get all your pets back. Onslaught when you have them. 
Use up your onslaught. Next spell. Onslaught. No more. Link attack. Use that. Next spell. Now let's learn some optimizations for fairy. So here's how you use your here's your optimizations. With purge, you can dash cancel to save about 0.17 seconds. Yeah, I counted. To get that going. So always dash cancel that. And then so this is a really huge one. So strafe, this is what strafe looks like. It's a channel. But what a lot of people don't know is it can be canceled incredibly fast. So check this out. I casted it. Now, here's where that thing I told you comes into play. The pets cannot be at two places at the same time, right? So if you do this, look, at, look, the pets do damage. See how the pets do damage? Now, if you summon the pets and then you immediately onslaught, they disappear. See? So... They immediately disappear and they don't get off that big burst damage that you want. So, during this phase, this is optimal. It's gonna be crazy. So this is, this is the op- this is what you do. You pop that, and then you whip. Regular whip. Regular whip. And then when they're gone, then you jump in and you continue your onslaught. It's kind of weird. Kind of a weird thing that you have to like learn with fairy. And also that whip is also cancelable. So you could go, go like this. Right when the last hit whip hits. Uh, whip, whip hit hits. Alright. And then uh, you've got uh, this one, the death down. Same, same thing. You're gonna wanna cancel that. And then start whipping until it hits. And then you could do your thing. If you hit it and then you don't wait, then it'll go away. So you basically want to pop it and then hit a couple times and then jump in. You can even finish that combo if you want, just for like more damage. Like that. All right. So those are your big optimizations. Also, Hinrichten has a little bit that you can do. So you can... You can also pop Hinrichten like this. And you can dash cancel that. All right. So those are the really big dash cancels that you have there. Again, fairy is kind of weird. You gotta kind, you gotta just learn. You gotta, you gotta go with the flow. You know, go with the flow with her. A lot of like this move right here. Let me tell you that this is your last resort. This is I have no pets left and no skills, or I can't cast. I can't cast because I'm silenced. If if that happens, you can summon pets by doing one combo. And the the pet. So you want to do one. Get the hit and then jump in and immediately onslaught. Don't do this. It doesn't do that much damage. This is terrible damage. Don't do this. And don't do the combo to summon like more pets. You only need... The reason why is because onslaught damage is linear by pet. And it doesn't do that much. So what you really want is the death down and the attack down from the pets. So that's why you kind of just... Kind of just let them, let let two of them go because two of them is enough to get the death down. The first one is two, right? And then the next two is three casts. So it's like this. You get two pets, and then you have to do it again. You get one pet, then you do it again. Oops, sorry. Two pets, and you do it again to get three pets. It's not worth it. They all do the same damage, too. It's, it's not... It's not ideal. Anyway, that's my fairy guide. Um, I'll show a little bit of combat so you guys can, can see how to play her. Alright, here we go. Vazric Fireworm Proud. Gonna go solo against the dragon just to show a little bit of the mechanics, okay? <clears throat> We're gonna get the big stun here. Pop. Throw the pets in. Get the link. We can also hit like, in here. Cancel. Do that. You can come down. Back out. We're gonna pop strafe. 
and hit him a couple times with our whip. Can't really get in. It's okay. Get the iframe there. More of that. Oh, actually, I didn't reckon. I had... <laughs> I was invincible. See, I should have I thought about that. I was invincible. Thanks for watching the guide, and I hope you have a great day. Again, I stream on Twitch. Hope to see you there. Twitch.tv slash leaflet. Bye-bye. Oh,